Good morning. I hope that y'all are doing well out there, and I hope that you'll come and enjoy this time together. It's a hot but pretty morning here in Nashville, and we're grateful for that. Um, as you gather around your phone or your laptop, whatever device you're using, I hope that you will just settle in. Let God settle into your spirit. Breathe deeply. Put your feet flat on the floor. <laughs> if you can. And um, I want you to just breathe deeply. Palms up. Breathe into the count of six or four, dependent upon your lungs. Breathe out to the count of either six or eight. Breathing out more air than you've just taken in. And I want you to do that three times. Breathe in to the count of six. Breathe out to the count of eight. In to the count of six. Out to the count of eight. Let your spirit settle and know that God is with you. I pray that the Holy Spirit be felt within you this day, that you feel that gentle nudge toward the light every second, every moment, leading and guiding you into the fullness of Christ Jesus. I am Reverend Neely Hicks, and I'm one of the several pastors at Glencliff United Methodist Church, and we are a community that believes in living out Christ's life in community, and that means accepting all, loving all, doing what we can to lessen suffering for all, and staying close to God who teaches us to do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God always. I have a few announcements this morning. Um, I do not have the birthday list in front of me. I do know that next week we'll be celebrating Alice Craft's birthday on August the 1st. I know that others of you have celebrated birthdays this month. If you would want to list your birthday in the comment section below, that would be great. We would love to celebrate your lives with you. So I'm not going to sing happy birthday to you, but please know that we are thankful for God's life in you. And we pray that every day you will feel the nearness of God and that you will enjoy this life enjoy it. Take in the things that bring you joy, that make you laugh, that make you smile, that make you care for one another, and the year ahead will be a blessed one. We do have some people in the hospital or recently out of the hospital, and so we continue to pray for Doris Green. We pray for Carolyn and Sam we pray for Bowie and Alice as she travels. We pray for those who have suffered from COVID and who are recovering from it, especially our president. We pray that all of you will stay safe from other illnesses that are contagious. We pray also for um, the family of those who are mourning the loss of individuals who have moved on to their true home this year, especially the Shelton family. We pray for Autora Eason Williams family and all of those who love her. We pray for those who have suffered losses in their families and communities through gun violence through pain and suffering, 
we offer prayers. So let us pray now. Most holy and loving God, we know that there is much suffering in this world, but we know, God, that your, your light is greater than any darkness. We cling to you, God, so that we find our true home in you. We pray for all of our loved ones, and we pray that you enlarge our hearts, that we may love even more. God, stay with us and guide us all the days of our lives. In Christ's holy name, amen. So, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever started a new plant from a friend's plant? Maybe somebody gave you a cutting from their garden and you wanted to grow one just like it because theirs was so happy and healthy. The roots must then be cultivated in the right soil, the right light, the right moisture level. Once that plant grows, it looks like the plant that it came from. Hold this image in mind while I read today's passage from Colossians 2 verses 6 through 7, and I'm reading from the message version which if you've never heard of it, it's kind of an easier translation than um, some of the other translations of the Bible. It puts it in today's language, okay? So Colossians chapter two, verses six through seven. My counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You received Christ Jesus, the master, now live him. You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. And let your living spill over into thanksgiving. I'm going to read a part of that again. You received Christ Jesus, the master, now live him. You received Christ Jesus, the master, now live him. The word of God, may it be a blessing to all who hear it. When you receive a plant from a well-tended garden, you know that it won't be diseased. If you get it elsewhere, Maybe it will have powdery mildew, bugs that destroy it, or other things that just don't help that plant grow. It may also infect the other plants that, you're, that you already have that are currently doing well. So you see how one plant can infect the next and the next and the next. So I wanna ask you, how did you first come to know this man named Jesus? How did you come to know Jesus? Who gave you that plant? Who extended those roots to you? Those who live Jesus should look like him, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, which according to the book of Galatians are, and you can name them out with me if you know them by heart, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is how you know you've received your roots from a well-tended garden. The people in our lives who share Jesus with us should bear a resemblance to Jesus, the master root of us all. Once that Jesus has been received, you will grow as a plant that resembles him. You're going to start bearing the fruits of that plant. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, just like a plant that when placed with others that are diseased or infected, we can take on their bugs and their diseases in the course of our lives. Can I get an amen? 
There are a lot of spiritual bugs and diseases in our world today, aren't there? Just think about the suffering that we see when you go to any news source. We see a lot of disease and infection and suffering. So it's good that we also know the opposites of the fruits of Christ, the opposites of them. So I want you to think through what the opposites would be. So for joy, for love, we'll start with love. For love, you might see an opposite of hate or apathy because apathy is the true opposite of love. It's not caring at all, feeling nothing of the other's pain or suffering. The opposite of joy we can think of um, uh, being forlorn, being hopeless, peace. You could see anger, um, anger at things that maybe don't really matter. We all should have righteous indignation and righteous anger. And anger in itself is not a sin. We know that Jesus got angry too when he walked this earth but he got angry about things that really mattered, that were oppressing other people. Forbearance, so patience, kindness. Um, what are some of the opposites of that? Maybe we see people who are always so anxious that they can't even see what's right in front of them, enough to be kind to one another. Goodness, so sharing and those kinds of things come from goodness. The opposite of goodness would be something like hoarding everything for yourself. Faithfulness, the opposite could be like wandering and not being rooted and connected to the spirit of God within you. Gentleness, um, people who are actively aggressive always towards other people, that's not a sign that they are staying close to the root of Christ within them. And self-control, you know, doing what one feels even if it hurts other people. So those are the opposites. Um, so where do you see these things in the world today? Where you see the opposite of the fruits of the Spirit. We often recognize the faults in one another because we also have those same faults within us. It's a hard truth. We all have the same abilities to love or hate, to love or judge, to be kind or rude, to see people unlike ourselves as less than, rather than seeing them as our brothers and sisters. So how do we flourish in this sometimes disrupted soil that instead seeks to infect us with bugs and harm. We have to plant ourselves in fertile soil. That means being careful what you take in from those who look nothing like Jesus, the Jewish carpenter we know God through, the one who was born in Bethlehem to impoverished parents, who had traveled a long distance to comply with government mandates. Jesus, who was taken away in the night to flee oppression, becoming a refugee in a foreign land. Jesus, who ate with those who others hated because they were different, because they were beggars, they were prostitutes, tax collectors, or not of the same religion. This is the Jesus that we worship, is the one who reached out and included all. So when our minds and our hearts try to somehow feel better or superior about ourselves than somebody else, we have to question that thought because God is in us all. And if we can't see it, then that's a problem with the soil that we are growing in. Align yourself with those who you can see the fruits of the Spirit in. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
We are a media-driven world, right? Here we are doing worship on Facebook. But this means that we have to be careful about the media that we take in. Getting your news from a variety of sources rather than being hooked up like an IV to a TV that's set on one news station all the time. That's not a good way of truth seeking. We need news from a variety of sources to get at the deeper truth. We have to remember that all of the people that we see on television anchoring the news, they're all getting paid by someone to say what they say. What is that person's agenda? Does it bring you closer to your roots in Christ so that you come to resemble Christ more and more? We have to think about these things as we take in different forms of media. When you vote, consider your choices carefully. What do the candidates stand for? Can you see Christ's resemblance in them? How will they mandate their personal choices for everyone else? And are they setting their choices based on an affluent norm that doesn't pay attention to those who are suffering, where they are not hearing the cries of the needy? How will other people be affected for the better? And how, who will be affected for the worst? Remember, as Christians, we are called to do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Make your decisions prayerfully about the candidates. See where you see Christ in them. Do they have a charitable foundation? Is it something that you can look at that foundation and see the goodness of Christ flourishing in the world today by caring for the stranger, for those who are in need and those who are suffering. We have to be careful to see who the candidates are as who they really are before we elect them to know what they will do for us and for others. Don't be deceived by those who do not bear any resemblance to the Christ whom we worship. Among those you love most, notice if they encourage you towards the likeness of Christ in yourself. Do they bring out the best in you? Are they encouraging you when you do something that's not right? Are they telling you, oh, come on, come, let's look at it a different way. Let's do this differently. Or are they flourishing in your weakness? We have to be aware that when we are around other people, we can take on their likeness rather than the likeness of Christ. So we want to be around the people who will encourage us towards love, joy, patience, peace, understanding, kindness, and self-control. If you do not see these gifts and that resemblance and of Christ in those who you are closest to, you need to make sure that you stay grounded and rooted outside of your time with those people. You need to make sure that you spend time in solitude as Jesus often did, going to a cave for himself after he had been with people. He would retreat to a cave, he would pray, he would worship God in silence and in spirit. And then he was able to go back out and recalibrate and stay centered rather than leaning more towards the destruction that he was seeing in others. So we too have to stay grounded and there's all kinds of ways to stay grounded. Sometimes it's as simple as going on an app like Reddit and looking at animals being bros, you know, animals helping animals or humans being bros, human beings helping other human beings. When we start to look at the goodness of the world, we can grow that light and say, ah, oh, there is God. Let us grow that light. You should be able to feed yourself with positive, joyful, and inspiring messages it does help recalibrate the spirit. 
We are all like plants, aren't we? Our roots are not earthly bound though. We are spiritual beings walking an earthly journey. So what is so in this life is only temporary. We know that when we stay rooted in the one who overcame death itself, Christ Jesus will show us the love that will echo throughout eternity. This is the way that we can live as disciples of Jesus, not just um, believing in Jesus in our heads, but taking Jesus into our hearts where then all of our actions, and maybe not all, because like we're none of us are perfect, but most of our actions are going to, I could have sneezed. <laughs> most of our actions are another person could see us and think, ooh, I want what they've got. I want what you're having because they see the fruits of the Spirit. They know that your soil is fertile and that something good is growing inside of you. I pray that you're going to take this out this week and really consider all of the choices of the thoughts that you take in and dwell upon. We know that thoughts lead to words, words lead to actions, actions lead to habits, habits lead to character, and character leads to destiny. So everything starts with our thoughts. So in this world of anxiety and sometimes hopelessness, find yourself firmly planted deep within in the spirit of Christ Jesus and live in him. Amen. I pray that you all have a blessed week ahead and what's left of the weekend. And I do hope that you'll support our community financially. Every penny counts. Every penny. If a penny is all you can give, give it because God sees your gift and God will multiply that. Money is just a sign that we care about something, right? We spend big money on the people that we love. We buy them nice things. When we give back to God in ways that are helpful to this world, we really can change the world together. May you go and be blessed. Listen to a great song today. The one I'll be listening to is this building. This old building has a leak and my soul has to move. I love that song. Listen to a song that feeds your spirit and may Christ Jesus always go with you. Amen.